Recently on this channel, I have been featuring many V8 automobiles. And why is that? Well, that's because these engines and these cars are going to be disappearing very soon for EVs, hybrids, etc. We all know that's going to be the future. So I wanted to cover this 2022 Lexus GX460 while I can. And I'm going to share with you the changes that they made because they made some brief changes and why you might be interested in this vehicle. One of the main reasons is, I already said, is the V8. It's got a 4.6 liter V8 producing 301 horsepower and 329 pounds-feet of torque. But why is the V8 so important? Why is it that most car enthusiasts are depressed that it's going away, right? Well, it's because it's the quintessential motor for a luxury automobile. It's got the smoothness, it's got the it's got the sound aspect to it. It's got a nice rumble to it on idle, right? It's the little things that add up and it's got effortless smooth power delivery, okay? Especially when it's naturally aspirated, it just makes it for a very enjoyable driving experience. Even if it doesn't have a whole bunch of power like how this GX460 does, okay? It's only got about 301 horses, but that's enough to move this thing around and it's going to feel relatively effortless while sounding great. So that's one of the reasons, despite this thing being a massive gas guzzler, you know that this thing is going to last forever and you know the resale value on these things, especially when they stop making it, is going to be through the roof. In fact, this is the time to really be taking advantage of some of these vehicles and I'll talk more about that a little bit later on. So for 2022, let's just get started here. Some of the major changes, of course, they had to add a black line special edition. They got to do that, right? But the major change that was made was the addition of the 10.3 inch touchscreen infotainment in the interior. Okay, it's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, as well as Amazon Alexa integration. You also have parking assist and navigation with power folding and heated mirrors, all as standard now for 2022. So those are your main changes, but let's go ahead and let's talk further about the GX, what it's about, why you should consider it, etc. Now the special edition, the black line, that's up to you if you wanna pay up for that, that's about $60,000. I would rather just get the GX460 premium trim level and then add on the premium plus package so you can get the Mark Levinson. The reason why is because even just the GX460 Premium as is, you will get three zone climate control, LED fog lamps, and heated and ventilated front seats. So right there, you have all the pragmatic features that you need. And when you get that Premium Plus, you'll get the Mark Levinson, which is one of the best audio systems that you can get in a modern day vehicle. And I like how for 2022, they made the uh, triple beam headlights, you know, many people like that they made that standard. So even if you get the base model GX, you're gonna get those headlights. So that's gonna be striking. And as we go through this little review here, I'm gonna be showing you pictures of the new 2022 GX, but I'm also gonna be playing the, the running footage of a 2017 GX 460, just so you can see the difference and you can see the older interior as well. But the essence is the same. But as I mentioned, the, the engine is the highlight, that buttery smooth V8. And that makes it for a rather capable machine because this is also a body on frame vehicle and it can tow up to 6,500 pounds, which is great for towing a boat, trailers, etc. This SUV also has trailer sway control, vehicle stability control, etc. So it'll keep you in line when you tow heavy objects. It is technically a seven seater, but I will say the GX is not very practical. That's not why you're really taking advantage of it. Really the RX 350 is the most pragmatic and one of the highest quality SUVs that you can get. For most people, that's what I recommend. However, the GX, again, because of the V8, because of the fact that it's a body on frame SUV, it just stands out for being the more capable machine. It's a true SUV. And these things are rather satisfying to drive. People can never really wrap their heads around when I say that these GXs and these LXs and some of these other larger SUVs and trucks like Sequoias, Tahos, Tundras, you know, all these like large vehicles, they are truly satisfying to drive out on the street. And the GX is no exception. It, it even handles pretty well too. I drove a older model, like an 03 GX, and you'd be surprised at how well it handles for being such a large vehicle. It's really not as bad as people might think. 
add to it the smoothness the motor plus the the ride quality which is exceptional with the capabilities it's just an interesting all-rounder but keep in mind something like a range rover isn't as practical as you might think either there's not a ton of room in the second row of that and people have no issues with that people buy that up so this gx i kind of see it in line with the with the tahoes and the and the range rovers but this is actually like a more reliable uh, machine that ages really well right so i'm surprised that a lot of those people haven't transitioned over into the gx i hope more people do continue to consider it at least but yeah anyway let's go through this some of the things okay you got the kinetic dynamic suspension system that's standard and the way the suspension is designed is to keep the vehicle level at all times both on road and off road so it, it always remains neutral but you also have an optional adaptive variable suspension avs and that's going to utilize electronically controlled dampers to adjust to road surface conditions and that changes between the the normal mode the sport mode comfort mode etc and you got a torsen limited slip differential that splits the power 40 percent in the front and 60 percent in the rear and as mentioned before, this is a true off-roader. This thing is a lot like the Range Rovers. It can actually tackle legitimate, difficult terrains, etc. So basically any type of inclement weather and Starbucks drive through curbs that you run over, this can eat that up, no problem. So you don't really have to worry about that. And you have plenty of safety features as standard for 2022, like pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure, intelligent high beams, high-speed dynamic radar, cruise control, intuitive parking, as I mentioned, that's all standard. And also things like the blind spot monitoring, that is standard. So blind spot monitoring, that's really the only safety feature I really find important. So I'm glad that they made that standard as well. But otherwise, there's no real drastic changes. It still remains true to itself. It's one of those vehicles that's going to remain timeless. It's one that you're going to want to take advantage of while you can. If this is something that you're looking into, I get it. It's not the most pragmatic vehicle. The gas mileage does suffer. It is a machine that almost transcends time. As I mentioned, I've been in a lot of these higher mileage Lexus machines and they do age remarkably well. If you just clean them up, they can actually pass for brand new vehicles. So that's one of the things I really like, the build quality, the fit and finish, all those things, they really last for a long time. So that's what I'm saying. If you buy one of these things new, it can last you. But, but one of the more pragmatic and efficient ways I've found of purchasing one of these GX models is through leasing. Okay, I've noticed uh, the lease prices go for around $570 to $680 if you get the top level luxury trim level. So that's kind of what you're going to be looking into there with no money down that's just kind of what i noticed going through the lease hacker forums what some of these brokers are offering and you can get about on average eight to seven percent off the msrp price and i think there's about five hundred dollars worth of lease cash so that's something to keep in mind then after the lease if you still like the machine as long as it's not totaled and completely destroyed you can buy it out at the end of the lease or just trade it back in, whatever you want to do. And I'm sure you'll be left with a ton of equity because as I mentioned, the resale value on these things is amazing. So you shouldn't have to worry there. The RX is going to make more sense as a daily driver. But if you're like me and you drive less than 10,000 miles a year, you're really going to enjoy the buttery smooth nature of something like the GX460. And if you live up north or something, the extra capabilities, the fact that this is a true off-roader, the fact that this is a body-on-frame machine that can tow legitimately up to 6,500 pounds, that might also seem attractive to you compared to some of the more front-wheel drive-based SUVs that you see running around. Up to you there, but I just wanted to bring this vehicle to your attention. It's just a slept-on vehicle. Many people seem to buy you know the affluent buyers they do seem to like the the tahoes the yukons and the escalates i'm surprised that more people don't consider this i understand that the lexus lx 570 is pretty pricey at around 100 grand but but this gx retains a lot of the nature and demeanor of the larger lx so i think many people will enjoy driving this so let me know your thoughts on the 2022 gx 460 have they done enough do you still want the disco lights and the neon lights inside the interior or do you appreciate the lexus interiors as they are and i would also be curious to hear your thoughts on the looks of the gx as well so thanks again for watching take care and goodbye